Hello, everybody, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. And I'm Alan. And this episode was recorded on June 7th, 2010, live at jupiterbroadcasting.com forward slash live. And really, the big story today has got to be iPhone 4, Apple's WWC announcements, and all that stuff. What is the WW? What does that stand for? Worldwide Developers Conference. Ah, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. Of course. That's what it stands for. Yes. They uh, they have this every year, and they announce always a bunch of stuff. But you know what? We managed to pick out a few other tidbits in the news, right? Uh, a few things here and there that are at least interesting to me. Not all iPhone stuff. No, not we're at gonna all. We're going to cover some of it, but it's not all about iPhone stuff. Uh, and then uh, we're going to take the opinions from the chat room live. They're already all lit up about the iPhone stuff. And then towards the end of the episode, I'm going to share a story with you. I decided to uh, have at my droid. I thought, you know what? <laughs> this was late, late last night. I'm, I'm up and I'm, uh, I'm you know, reading about uh, Engadget's live coverage of the new iPhone announcement. New iPhone's going to be coming out. I thought, let's just see what I can get out of my droid. Push it to the limit. Let's just see you know, if I can make this a really awesome phone because it's just a little sluggish, a little unpolished for, for me. This is coming from a guy who, before doing this, has overclocked his droid to make it faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. Uh, I just I'm, I'm really big about I when I'm when I'm in high stress situations I'm really big about being able to just you know have it respond immediately. Oh, like I was saying earlier to the chat room is that's what pisses me off yeah. the most about the droid is it freezes Sometimes up it's like, it, ju it just yeah. slugs. Yeah. Other, other times it's just lickety split, but that's yeah. few and far between. So uh, I have now the uh, PS3 mod or something like that kernel it runs my droid at a gigahertz with Froyo 2.2 giga uh, 2.2 OS on there. So the droid, I think, normally runs around 530 megahertz, and I'm running at a gigahertz now. That's a, that's a pretty big jump. And, you know, you, the immediate Not thing bad. you think is, well, what about heat? What about power consumption? Well, I guess the chip <laughs> that's in here was originally designed to run a lot faster, but they downclocked it for power consumption. But uh, if you use the uh, system correctly, you can let it idle at lower CPU speeds when you're not using it very heavily, and you don't really consume that much more power except for when you're really using it. I really haven't noticed any difference, but I've definitely noticed a performance improvement. Now, is that like an app or just something that you set up automatically and it just it's takes care of It's kind of complicated. It's Figures. A, it's, a compli it's a combination of app and some other hacking that has to be done. Nothing impossible, but, you know, kind of kind of nerdy. Yes. But the end result is I'm pretty happy with what I've got. And I was kind of comparing, comparing you know, Froyo with iPhone 4.0 that they talked, or IO, iOS 4, whatever they call it now. And, uh, you know, there's really no compelling reason to switch from Android. Ideally, what I would really love to see is an Android OS on that iPhone hardware. Because it really looks like a slick piece of hardware. It's 25% thinner than the current iPhone, which is already quite thin. Yeah. That's it has a, a metal band enclosure around it, which acts as an antenna. So that entire enclosure that's pretty nice. is an antenna. And they've integrated the Wi-Fi, the cellular, the Bluetooth, all in this metal band. So the reception, I got to figure, is going to be fantastic because that's the same thing they did in the iPad. And the iPad also has fantastic reception. It makes sense. I don't know why companies didn't do it before. Um, so, but I don't. I, you know, I'm not really compelled by the iPhone OS anymore. Really? I. You know, it's because it, right before it this, you were all about your iPhone. You said well, you know you were done with the Droid. It wiped your hands clean if, of it. If if I was gonna give it to somebody like my, uh, you know, my mom or somebody that I didn't want to have to have a, you know, ever have to worry about. Updating an application that maybe would be a little weird, a little awkward how to how to do it, or maybe have to sometimes remind her that you have to hold down to get an alternate menu, mom. You know, if I didn't want to have to do that kind of stuff, <laughs> I'd still say get an iPhone. Or if I was somebody who never really wanted to worry about any of that stuff, get an iPhone. But at the end of the day, the problem is the iPhone is a completely integrated solution top to bottom. And if you're okay with the entire package, if you're okay with iPhoto, iTunes, the iTunes Music Store, and all that stuff, it's okay. It's pretty good. But if you want to start integrating third-party services like Google Voice and Google Docs, maybe work with different things, there's all of a sudden you start running into these limitations. And if you don't need those extra things, those limitations don't matter. But the moment when you do want those extra things, you start to get frustrated. And you don't like those limitations. You want to move beyond that. And they, that's kind of where you start looking at the Android because there's no limits like that. I just like how when you talked about the Android or the differences, then you just went to all the Google-based apps. Yeah. 
It's the same it, thing. Like, it is interesting. How, yeah. how many of the uh, the apps that you have that are like the cool, good ones are actual Google? On on my Android? Yeah. Oh, seventy uh, percent of them. So I most mean, of them. And is the thirty percent really worth that extra push that makes it better than the iPhone? Well, in some in some ways, yeah, because one of them's like uh, is a service that's location and 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 situationally aware. Right. It's called locale. So it can be it can trigger different events based on time of night or my GPS location or the power situation of the phone or the orientation. So I can say when I'm at home and it's between these this time and this time, you know, set these parameters up automatically. But when I go to my clients, automatically mute my phone or set it to vibrate, bring up my all my reminders for this client that's tagged with this client at this location. I just I have no need for that. I know all. it's crazy. It's so way over. I guess I guess for important people. No, like no, some of it's us, too much. It's yeah. Too I much. just I I have no. And if you don't need that stuff, the iPhone is great. And I don't know. I have a lot of issues with the phones, and hopefully, hopefully this will fix them. I. Yeah. The main thing for me is flash. Really, come on. Yeah. Like just I, do it. I I was kind of promised it earlier. On my phone, on my Android. Oh, I know. Still I know. don't have it. I can now technically just um, now get it with the new with the new uh, OS I installed. Really? I have to go like find it somewhere, but I can technically now do it. But I don't. Ooh. I don't know. I'm sure it's gonna run like balls. I'll try <laughs> it. I'll do it. I'll, How I'll hard tell is you. it? It's been like the what in the number one format forever on the internet as far as like right. videos like that. I know. I know. It's crazy. You know what's nuts is more people have Flash than they have Java or anything else. Well, yeah. 99% of the people that come to JupiterBroadcasting.com have Flash. Only 80% have Java. Yeah. It's, wow. It, and, and you know, here's what I'll do. Yeah, that's not supported. I, I'll put it on my droid tonight or tomorrow, and I'll tell you on tomorrow's show. Uh, okay, I'll report back. Nice. See how it works. I well, what, honestly what, look forward to that because I, I want to see it because I want my droid to be what they said it could be. And <laughs> what you know it can be. <laughs> All right. All right. So I know we had another story that you wanted to talk about that was kind of not uh, this boring stuff here about the iPhone. Well, it is. It's just very, it's way more nerdier, I think. Oh, uh, one last thing before oh, we go on the iPhone. Do. I just wanted to mention, uh, I think the one thing about the new iPhone that shouldn't be discredited is the uh, r- reports on the new screen are absolutely stunning, More, uh, just absolutely amazing. That is the one thing I've heard is that the uh, yeah, screens just look the, beautiful. The, the pixel density is supposed to be so compact that uh, it's supposed to look not like you're looking at a display of something, but you're looking at that thing right. on a screen. It just it's it's phenomenal. It's higher resolution than you can even believe. I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see uh, with what they did with the iPhone four to see what they do with the iPad two. Yeah, that's what I want to oh, see. Oh, you know, one other thing too. Before we go, and then I'll, I'm sorry, I'll <laughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> I know it's it's ridiculous. It's hard uh, to get them to shut up. I just think it's neat that they, they're going to try to do an open standard on their video chat thing. I'd like to see maybe other people. Let's just all standardize on something. Yeah. And they're, and they're doing that video chat now, and they're, they made all the, all the technology behind that. They're going to make that an open standard. Nice. That's cool. All right. I'm sorry, dude. What were you going to say? So you were going to talk about something. Yes, I was. Um, pretty much what it is is that teleportation has come a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. And who isn't excited about that? If not, go away. Totally. <laughs> but basically, uh, some Chinese scientists have uh, teleported data basically 10 miles, which before it was a very small radius. Yeah. Like When you say teleport, you literally mean oh. it vanished from one location and immediately appeared yep. at the other location. Oh, yeah. And it's called like quantum entanglement. Wow. Yeah, and so it's all garbly goop when it does arrive instantly on the other side. So it doesn't come in the original order. Now, is that intentional? You don't know. I don't know. Mm. But at least for it the, doesn't arrive in the right order. At least. Yeah, at least for their use, it That's is because for right now it's mainly since it is just data, um, mainly used for like coding and stuff like that between either high businesses or government use. Ah. Um, and so they have to send the encryption key, you know, through normal snail mail or otherwise, because it would otherwise it would arrive jumbled, right? And, and then, then they wouldn't and be able to assemble. That's it. It's just yeah. So so even though this teleportation is totally instantaneous, they still have to totally wait on that key. Yep. 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 Mm, that's pretty funny. Yeah, just because it's all quantumly entangled. And you were so. saying one of the things too is they like they don't just 
Like it's not like Star Trek style where they just point the transporter beam at something and then you materialize on the surface. Like you have to have the receptacle unit. That's what it seems like. And if you don't um, have the receptacle, you're not going to receive it. They didn't, you know, disclose the, yeah. all of the. <laughs> I mean, we were looking at the blueprints and we were building one earlier. It's kind of confusing because yeah. it's in Chinese, but mm -hmm. hopefully in a few days we can teleport. Yeah. yeah. I, I started my son Dylan on Mandarin. Right. Uh, so he'll assemble it, and then we're going to send him around 10 miles. He's a smart kid. Yeah. He'll, he'll figure, figure it out. out. <laughs> we're, not, we're not too worried about it. All right. Well, so Jupiter at Night is our new nightly show here at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And uh, you can watch us at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back every night. We're here Monday through Thursday. So please join us. Please. <laughs> please. Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.